The 12th of October was something of an historic occasion for the addicts, as it marked the club's first ever competitive match abroad. Our roving cameraman dusted off his passport to join Charlton's loyal band of travelling supporters as they set off from Gatwick Airport. Almost 300 fans managed to make it over to Italy for the match, 95 of them joining the special football flight chartered by the club. We asked some of Charlton's mile-high supporters why they'd taken the time and trouble to follow the addicts into Europe. Right, gentlemen, we're on our first ever competitive trip to Europe. Um, why have you come, Chris? Well, it's, I think it's very important for the club, and since it's their first chance in Europe, I think it's important to be here for the game. I mean, is this a serious competition, do you think? Uh, I don't think it's that serious from the club's point of view. You don't get the impression they're completely worried about whether they win or not. I think it's a fantastic experience for the players as well, and uh, I'm delighted to be here. So good fun for the fans as well, obviously. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Are we going to win? Well, I hope so. That's what we've come out here for. Brendan, why have you decided to come all this way out to watch Charlton play in Brescia? Well, I mean, the first competitive match, obviously, in Europe. Um, I've, I've been watching the team since 58. I've, been, I've seen them play in Ostend in uh, 66. I went to Amsterdam to see them play in 69. But this is a real game, this is a real competitive match, and we just couldn't miss it. You've just got to be here. Naturally, our smooth-talking reporter Steve Dixon also found time to chat up the cabin crew. Tell me, what was your reaction when you found out you were taking a plane load of football fans to Italy? Well, um, we thought that uh, there wouldn't be any women on board, and we thought they'd all be like these rowdy men, but we're quite surprised because they're so well behaved. Were you looking forward to some rowdy men, may I ask? Oh, we couldn't wait. <laughs> well, we were just ecstatic this morning when we got into work and found out we couldn't wait. I mean, with the, with the publicity regarding the England fans in Rotterdam, which we've had today, I mean, are you, I mean, are you surprised at uh, the behaviour of the people on board? I'm very surprised, actually. I'm very, very um, impressed with you all. I think you're all wonderful. Who's going to win? I don't know who Play. you're playing. <laughs> Bella Italia, there was plenty of time to look around the historic town of Bergamo and to absorb some of the local culture. Some fans seem to be absorbing rather more culture than others. Brescia, the excitement seemed to have been too much for these weary travellers. We caught up with Alan Kerbishley at the Players Hotel and asked him about Charlton's prospects for the match. Alan, we're a couple of hours before our first ever competitive fixture abroad. Um, how, how are you approaching the game? Uh, well, we're going into the unknown really. I mean, we've, we obviously haven't had Brescia looked at. Uh, we haven't seen anything on them at all. We tried to get some videos of them, but they never came through. So we're just going into the unknown. I think what we're looking for mainly is just to carry on from where we left, left off at Barnsley and hopefully uh, do a little bit better in the attacking wise, but get the things going what we're good at and uh, take it into the Leicester game on the Saturday. Finally, the time had come for the match itself. The Anglo-Italian Cup may have failed to capture the imagination both in the UK and in Italy, but Charlton's travelling fans were determined to give their team vociferous support. From Brescia's cavernous stadio Mario Rigamonti, here's our globe-trotting man with the microphone, Steve Dixon. 
Charlton Athletics European Adventure is underway here in Brescia, the Addicts' first ever European competitive fixture in the Anglo-Italian Cup. It's Brescia versus Charlton Athletic. So Charlton Athletics' first ever competitive fixture in Europe is underway. The Addicts are playing from right to left here in Brescia, wearing an all-red strip. The home team are in blue shirts with a distinctive white V on the chest, white shorts and white socks. The Charlton players before the match in the team hotel were saying they knew very little about the Italian sides, the Brescia team here tonight had sent the videos but they didn't arrive so this is a totally new experience for the Charlton team this is Zilliani for the home side and working some neat football around the box and the shot coming in and the first shot of the match there going wide of Mike Salmon's goal A lot of space for Stuart Barmer and Darren Pitches found him. And deep towards Leeburn. Nelson's got the touch in there. And Nelson in with a chance. Ah, oh, a great save by the goalkeeper, Kusan. Gary Nelson with Charlton's first chance after nine minutes. Fine save by the goalkeeper. Oh, let's look at a deflection, and it's and it's in a deflection. Ambrosetti with the shot. It took a wicked deflection, and it loops over Mick Salmon. And Brescia have the lead, really against the run of play here. It didn't look at all dangerous. Ambrosetti cutting in from the right-hand side on his left foot. The shot came in. It took a wicked deflection. Off. I think it might have been Sturgis. They seem to deceive Mike Salmon, looped over the goalkeeper's head and in the corner and Brescia have the lead in the Anglo-Italian Cup. It's Brescia 1, Charlton Athletic 0. It looks as if Charlton goalkeeper Mike Salmon is about to be substituted. In fact, John Vaughan is making his first appearance of the season for the Annex. But not his first ever. He of course played six games on loan for Charlton back in 1984-85. Alan Pardew. And on this near side, Stuart Palmer, trying to find Gary Nelson, who, the man who, to date, has had the best chance of the game for Charlton. That came in the ninth minute. Nelson finding space in the penalty area, but the goalkeeper, Kusan, making a fine save at Nelson's feet. That would have given Charlton the lead and uh, it would have a lead that the addicts probably would have deserved certainly having had the best of the opportunities or certainly the best of possession in the first half now we have a free kick swung in by Nelson and there's a chance oh and a fine save <laughs> Leeburn I think it was that got the header in but the goalkeeper plucked the ball out of the air when it looked to be heading for that far corner And Charlton living dangerously, the ball coming back off the post, and now there's another chance, and that, I think, will be a corner. Indeed, it is a corner. And Charlton going very close there to being 2-0 down, the free kick striking the foot of John Vaughan's left-hand post. And the goalkeeper in some difficulty there under pressure from uh, Kim Grant and they do seem to be very very casual about their defending the Italians and perhaps that's an area where Charlton could capitalize in the last 24 minutes of this game and driven in and a chance surely but no cleared and this time it's the Italians turn to live dangerously but they get the ball away and they're breaking quickly again with Ambrosetti that's going to go out on this near side
And now is Lieburn in. Can he get his Lieburn in now? Oh, it's a good save by Kusan. And Carl Lieburn coming close then as the clock ticks round to 80 minutes. And it's there! Oh no, it's not. It looked so close. It looked so close. And Lieburn trying to get the flick on for Grant, but he's won it now, Lick Carl Lieburn. Now Kim Grant's pushed forward into an offside position, but Carl Lieburn's held it up well to find Danny Mills. Now Grant's in, and the flag's up on this near side, so it wouldn't have counted. But the goalkeeper making a good interception, and the referee playing a good advantage, and Brescia are breaking. They've got four men forward. One of them is Bonametti, and he's in, and there's a chance here. And it's wide, oh, so close. The corner, I think the referee's given a corner, John Vaughan was exposed, there was a good tackle coming in, I think it was probably Phil Chappell. We've played a minute of stoppage time here in Brescia, and could this be the goal that wraps it up? Oh, there's a chance for Ambrosini, Ambrosetti has scored, it's all over. The live wire left winger gets his second goal of the night in the 92nd minute. The result at full time, Russia 2, Charlton Athletic nil. Peter Burrows asked co-manager Steve Grit for his reactions to that rather disappointing result. We're pleased with the way we've played. Uh, the lads put their lot in and I think all in all I thought we were unfortunate not to come out with at least a point. Uh, but I certainly don't think we've let ourselves down. Uh, I've got to say that the supporters that came over have been absolutely magnificent. Uh, you know, they, they made a lot of noise throughout the whole game. I hope they've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope they don't feel that we've let them down. Uh, they certainly didn't let us down. They've come over in their numbers and uh, it was nice to see them here.